Another nail video. This is going to be a all nail designs video. This video has a bunch of different things in it. You know, we got Gel X nails, we have our natural nails, we have press ons with a lot of fun designs. As always, everything I use in this video is going to be linked in my description. Also, if you want to see stuff more organized and specific stuff, I have everything organized on my Amazon storefront. And then I'm also going to be doing shorter videos of this on TikTok and my Instagram. And I have specific specific nail accounts for those so if you guys would like to see that or maybe follow them I don't know we're about to hit 10k on the nail Instagram okay I hope you enjoy I love you bye The first look we're gonna be doing are these brown velvet French tip nails. I love these because it's a little bit different than just putting two coats on and calling it a day. You know, it's not as boring. And of course I went in with brown to give it more of a fall feel and I love how these turned out. So I have an entire video on how to get Gelix nails to last. All of my tips on how to apply them in this video. So I'm not gonna be showing that because it can get very repetitive and this is about design. But for this look, I did wanna go in with some medium almonds so I'm applying all of those One of my biggest tips, if you are using cheaper nail polishes, which all of the nail polishes I use are affordable, I get them off Amazon, they're like $5 max. And majority of the time, I only go in with gel polish. If you don't want your nails to peel or chip and to get them to last like a really long time, I do suggest to remove all of the shine from the gel extension. You can go in with a buffer like this, or you can take a nail drill with a sanding bit and just drill off all the shine. A lot of people say it's not necessary for gel extensions but honestly it does make a really big difference in how long the polish looks good like the longevity of it I always recommend it so for this look I did want to go in with a medium almond for this design we are going to be doing velvet nails. I'm going to be going in with this brownish color because I feel like it fits fall. We're not just going to be going in with one coat of this and then we're done. We're actually going to be creating a French dip with this. This is my inspo at Hey Great Nails. And if you don't know what velvet nails are, you use a metallic polish and you have to move it in a certain way with a little magnet. And I'm going to be showing you how I get these French dips. This was my first attempt, so we're going to see how it goes on our actual nails, but I just wanted to practice before I did it and I didn't want to mess up. I'm first going to be doing like the base of my nail and kind of creating the French tip like this. And then I'm going to be taking a nail art brush and kind of shaping out where my French tip would be. And I have a dish of acetone sitting right here. So I'm now going to be taking my little magnet and going along the sides like this. And we are going to be doing two coats of this. So now going in for our second coat and doing the same exact thing. are going to fill in the French tarp portion with the same exact nail polish. Making sure only the new nail polish is on the French tip portion, so I always clean up down here. You're going to want to hold the magnet this way. 
So I go on like the top. Now for our second coat. I'm gonna do the same exact thing on all of my nails. After all of them are cured, I'm going to be taking my top coat. Curing that for 60 seconds and then wiping them down with rubbing alcohol to get rid of the sticky coat. Going in with cuticle oil, of course. I think I need to practice these a little bit more. This is the first time I've ever used magnetic nail polish. So there is a little bit of a learning curve. I do suggest getting those fake nail sticks and practicing on there so you don't need to like practice on your actual self. They looked really amazing in real life too. Like the shine and the metallic just made them look so cool, especially in the sunlight. Off to look number two. Next look is going to be a Halloween themed nail look. I wanted to throw one design in here because I didn't get around to doing a Halloween nail video. I actually asked you guys to send me pictures of nail designs you wanted me to recreate and I received this one from quite a bit of people. We got the scream face. It's more pink themed with some little pink drips. I'm going to be going in with my long coffin shaped. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that like we're doing coffin nails and it's like a Halloween look. Fun! And now we're moving the shine from all of the extensions. And then you can see for this one, I went in with my drill. Taking my favorite nude in shade 036, doing two coats of that on my thumb, my pointer finger, and my ring finger. curing them for 60 seconds each time. So I'm now going to need a very pale pink, kind of made a little concoction, and I show all the polishes I used, um, and I apply this to my middle finger. And then if you ever get it outside the lines, I just take a flatter nail brush with a little bit of acetone to clean up around my cuticle. Having nail polish in your cuticle just makes it look not clean. I feel like this is a little step that really makes the nail look more put together. Doing two coats of that, one thing I love doing, which I actually Actually have seen in a lot of videos from Russian manicures is taking a long nail art brush really getting the nail polish on the side of the nail it makes it look more clean more put together more professional and then on my pinky I'm going to be creating a ombre of that same light pink to a milkyish white color and honestly ombres are way easier than I feel like a lot of people think especially if you're using translucent type of colors I'm putting the light pink halfway on my nail from my cuticle up and then putting the milkyish white color on the other half of my nail and then I take a long nail art brush and kind of just swipe it back and forth in the middle to blend the two cure that and then I'm going to be doing the same exact thing for a second coat
So that is all of our base colors and now we are going to move on to design. For our pointer finger, we're going to start out with a white French tip by drawing a vertical line, a horizontal line, and then connecting the sides to the middle line. And then I just fill it in with the nail polish brush itself. I do two coats of that to make sure it's really opaque, curing that for 60 seconds each time. Now we're going to be taking a light pink and first outlining the French tip with a long nail art brush. To create the drips on the French tip, easiest way I found to do this is using a dotting tool. You get a good glob of nail polish on your dotting tool. And for this, I went in for a smaller dotting tool because they are smaller-ish drips. I set it on the nail and I drag it up, but lift up the dotting tool when you're doing it and it makes the drip. Another way to do this is to use the dotting tool again, do a dot, and then take your long nail art brush and drag from the dot to make a drip. And then you wanna connect it to the pink line we made along the French tip to make it look like it's dripping like out of the French tip. Moving on to our middle finger and this is going to be the scream face. First, I am etching out the head and I'm kind of just making like an oval and then along the sides I make it go out a little bit for where his shoulders would be going out. Curing that for 60 seconds and honestly one coat was enough. Now with creating the face, I am a pretty artistic person and I draw and I paint so this stuff kind of comes a little bit more naturally to me but I will say this does take practice to do little designs like this but I feel like majority of people watching this can do it like I really believe that you guys can do it it's not as hard as you think my favorite thing to do is to go in with long nail art brushes and just take your time what I'll do in the very beginning I will take my long nail art brush get barely any nail polish on it. I will get the nail polish on it and almost rub it all the way off and then sketch out the outlining of the face and the mouth and then start to fill it in you don't want to have a lot of polish on your brush because it just gets messy it gets super thick and globs key is to really barely have any on there. Looking back at this now, I wish I would have done two coats for the face, but I didn't. So it's not as opaque. Now I am creating the eyes, the nose, and the little eyebrows and cheekbone type things. You guys can't see it now, but I actually have my phone on a tripod with the picture zoomed in, and I like to have the picture right next to me so I can see exactly what I'm supposed to do. And I just take a teeny tiny nail art brush with black polish, and, and for the nose, I created like a little upside down heart. For the eyes, little ovals. If I mess up, I take a flat, super thin nail art brush with a little bit of acetone to clean up the edges. And that really helps too if you go out of the lines a little bit. If you get one part that is super good and you don't wanna mess it up, just cure it. Just instantly, even if you just flash cure it because if you mess up another part next to it and you have to wipe it off, you don't wanna accidentally mess up the part that you just made perfect. And then in the eyes, there was little hearts and hearts are super, super easy. So taking a dotting tool, you literally just swipe two dots together and it makes a heart. And then there was little stars and stars again are very, very easy. You use a dotting tool to make a dot and then you take a nail art brush and you swipe swipe out of the dot on each side. This one is very, very tedious. This one probably took me the longest to do. It's not super difficult, it's just tedious. So using light pink, I create an outline of a heart and then making lines that obviously look like a spider web. So just going out of the heart, making sure all of the lines are symmetrical from all sides of the heart. And then once I have all that, I cure it. I am going to be doing a second coat to really make it pop. You just create little curved lines, but you want them to all match up. So then it's very symmetrical because that is how spider webs are.
So now going on to the pinky, we're going to be creating some drips from the cuticle. So I create a little line next to my cuticle where the drips are going to go into and then doing the same exact thing we did before, taking a dotting tool, making a dot and dragging it up and lifting it up. So then the line gets thinner, making that draw look. And then I use my long nail art brush to kind of make a curve into the line next to our cuticle to make it look very seamless and actually look like it's dripping, making sure that's all cured. Now going off to the thumb, I couldn't see the thumb in this picture, so I actually used another design that I thought would go good with this set, and I just created a little ghost. You just wanna etch out like a curved white line and then fill it in. And then I made little drop eyes for the ghost. And then along the sides to match the theme of the other nails, I just added pink hearts. Now we're going to add our top coat to all of our nails. Curing that for 60 seconds and then wiping them down with rubbing alcohol, of course, to get rid of that sticky coat. Adding cuticle oil and oh my gosh, these turned out so, so, so good. I love these. I am just so pissed at myself that I didn't add a second coat to the scream face, but it's okay. If you're doing this at home, I definitely recommend doing two coats. Our third look. I wanted to throw something in here that I actually have never done before, but we are going to be applying nail polish just to my natural nails. As many of you guys may know, my nails are very thin naturally. I have tried everything under the sun. Trust me when I tell you that. Every food, every cuticle oil, everything. And honestly, Gel X Nails has helped my nails grow out because it protects them and it helps them to be covered all the time so they don't chip and break. And by removing my nails properly and not ripping my nails off and biting my nails off, they've just started to grow out more. And I'll do a TikTok more on it. Definitely go and follow me on there so you guys can see that. This look is going to be a red look. I feel like red nails are very fall. You know, I've been seeing a bunch of stuff with the red nail theory, so I just wanted to throw in a red nail look. I wanted to not go in straight with like candy apple red. I wanted to go in with something a little bit darker. I actually mixed in a little bit of this darker burgundy color with my red. It still is very red, but it is a little bit darker, so I feel like it gives more of a fall vibe. This one is super simple. On all of my nails, except for my ring finger I'm going to be going in with red nail polish and I just want to throw in really quickly um, my cuticles are jacked up right now I've been very very anxious and biting my nails um, so just ignore that that has nothing to do with me doing my nails a lot I just have been anxious so just just ignore it and then going on all the sides of my nails with a long nail art brush getting that polish everywhere on the nail that for 60 seconds each time and now we are going to be going in to our ring finger. I'm going to be taking this milkyish pink color and doing two coats of that. And then just creating a little French dip with the same exact color, just to give the set a little bit more than just a plain manicure. I love accent nails. And now going in with our top coat. Wiping all of our nails down with rubbing alcohol. Of course. 
course, going in with cuticle oil. I personally like longer nails than this, but I did want to throw this in there for people who don't like long nails because everybody doesn't like long nails. I don't hate them. I think I just have like long nail dysmorphia at this point where I only think my hands look pretty if I have medium almond nails and up. This is going to be our last look and I really, really wanted to throw this in one of my videos. I'm going to be showing you how to make your own press-ons at home. So this is not going to be gel X application. We are going to be using gel extensions though. As you can see, I have all of my gel extensions on little nail stands and I get these nail stands from Amazon. I'll have them linked in the description. They come with little clay and you just use the clay to stick that on the nail stand super easy this is the inspo pick that i got sent to recreate i don't know the person who created this i'm sorry i get these pictures sent to me and they're usually off pinterest and it's hard to credit people when it's from pinterest so these are medium ish nails i do not own medium coffin nails so we are going to be going in with our long coffin nails sizing them all up these are a little bit too long so i'm going to be going in and trimming them filing them to make sure they're super duper even and filing them on the stands aren't that difficult you just just want to make sure you're pressing on the nail in the middle so it doesn't come off. I file them on the sides a little bit just to make them a little bit skinnier because that's what I prefer. As you saw by the design, some of these nails have French tips. So we are going to get the French tips out of the way first and then we are going to move on to the heart and swirl designs. So for our thumb, pointer finger, and pinky, these are all going to be French tips. So taking our nude shade 036 and putting one coat of that on all of those nails nails, curing that for 60 seconds, and now I'm going to be going in with a more pink translucent color. Curing those for 60 seconds, and now moving on to our French tips. For this look, you're going to need four colors for this gradient. I use these three polishes to create this gradient. The first one is a cream color and a caramel brown color. The second one, I wanted it to be neutralized a little bit so I took more of a neutral brown instead of a warm brown to mix into it, just made it a little bit darker. And then I did the same exact thing for the third color, just made it a little bit darker. And then for our last color, I am just going in with Beatles chocolate brown color. And this is actually from their set that I got recently is all of their thin nail brushes to create designs and I love these especially for beginners if you on our pointer finger I'm creating a French tip I got all these friendships done in probably 10 minutes so we're doing that dark brown color on our pointer finger doing two coats of that making sure it's very opaque doing a cream color on our pinky and then a darkerish cream on our thumb. So you wanna make sure those are all cured and when those are curing, you're going to start on your next two nails. So for the middle finger and the ring finger, I started out with the base of the cream color we used because for the heart, that is what's in the middle. It's going to be easier to put the browns over the cream rather than putting a cream color over brown. So doing two thin coats of that and then curing it each time for 60 seconds, this, took forever i am not gonna lie this design very tedious was it worth it yes these nails are very very pretty but i'm going to say this is this is a lot it took me forever as you can see i am using the smallest nail brush i own you first want to start out by drawing a heart with your second color in the gradient as soon as you get that heart down cure it then you're going to be taking your second color and outlining that heart. My flat nail art brush and acetone were my best friend through this with cleaning up the edges every five seconds. It helps so much curing that and then moving on to your darkest color. You can skip doing the next color because there is the cream in the background. It does get easier the farther out you go, I have found. But yeah, doing it right around the heart is pretty difficult. And that's coming from someone who's done their nails for almost 10 years. It just is like... Like, tedious it takes forever
Now moving on to our ring finger and that is going to be these pretty swirls. I'm using my longer nail art brush for this because honestly I find you have more control over swirls and bigger lines like this with a longer one and I'm just starting out with my darkest line and just going out from there. After all the nails are done, I apply my top coat. Remove the sticky coat after I cure them. And oh my gosh, this set is so freaking beautiful. If I had enough time on my hands, I would sell these. I know I've gotten a lot of questions on that, um, but doing nails is not my only job in the most respectful way possible. I don't have enough time to do that. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and say these last four to five weeks because I have never gotten press on to last that long. I have had these on for a week and one of them is gone. Um, and yes, I could just glue it back on. That's the fun thing about press ons. The longest I have ever had press ons last is two to three weeks. I'm going to show you how I get them the last two to three weeks because I'm gonna be honest, I think that's pretty damn good for press on nails. I always have like the smallest layer of hard gel on my nails, no matter what, because it helps my nails to not break. But even if you just have your natural nail, I always, always take a buffer and I buff my nails. You want them to have a little bit of texture so that everything that you're going to put on your nails after this is going to adhere better because it has more grip. Now I'm going to be going in with dehydrator first and then primer. It's going to reassure that there's no oils getting in the way that is going to make your nails lift quicker. The primer is helping your nails adhere better. And then you can go in with a base coat here, my all-time favorite nail glue. Okay, I have to pop in really quick and just say this. Do not apply polished nails, like you already painted them and stuff, or press on nails with gel. Don't do it. I have made this mistake in the past, and I now have contact dermatitis, and I get questions from you guys all the time. How do you still use gel when you have contact dermatitis? I have reactions after I film every single one of my videos for you guys. My cuticles get really red, my reactions aren't horrible, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, well then don't do it. I also just make these videos because, like, if no one watched them, I would still make them because I enjoy to make these videos. If you apply gel extensions that are already painted on your nails with gel, that gel is not fully curing. It doesn't matter how long you cure it for. For some reason, since there's polish on top, it cannot fully cure. So then what is going to happen is that uncured gel is going to seep into your natural nail, into your skin, and having uncured gel on your skin for that long gives you an allergic reaction. You could just get one allergic reaction or it could be contact dermatitis and i keep getting comments asking how do you get rid of contact dermatitis you can't you have it forever there is no cure that is why i'm saying this doing your nails at home and doing diy stuff it's a little bit more sketchy than going to a professional um this isn't a thing where it's like only some people like if you're doing it you are going to get contact dermatitis i needed to tell you guys that <laughs> okay back to the video one dot one dot of glue no more than that you do not want to drown it in glue. Honestly, I feel like my nails lift and pop off quicker when I do that. A teeny drop of glue, spread it around, and start at the cuticle and press down and hold it for a few seconds. And then, of course, cuticle oil. This is probably one of my favorite sets I've done in a long time. These turned out so, so, so good. 